intakes. Why are they so popular? It's simple. They make more power, they're fun to look at, and they even increase fuel economy. Allegedly. All it costs you is $400, 30 minutes, and half of your engine's lifespan. Wait, what? Factory, K&N, Gale Banks, SMB, massive difference. Absolute jump, you've been warned. Welcome back to the Freedom Works. My name's Jamin, and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about cold air intakes. The real world benefits, obviously, but also the huge downside that none of these companies want to talk about. I'm going to show you the independent science, not just marketing BS, so you can make an educated bad decision with your money. So here's the plan. First, I'll show you the difference between a factory intake and a cold air intake. Secondly, I'll show you the real world pros and cons. And finally, I'll explain why this might not be a good fit for you. But first, did you know that changing your air filter too frequently is actually bad for your engine? Yep. You heard that right. A dirtier filter is actually a more efficient filter. Take a look at these graphs from SAE paper 2001-01-0370 titled Discriminating Tests for Automotive Engine Air Filters. They clearly show that a used or loaded filter is much more efficient than a new one. When a new filter is installed, it starts at say 98% efficiency. As it filters air and starts capturing dirt, it forms a dust cake. Tastes about the same as fruit cake. But this layer of trapped particles actually helps the filter filter. After accumulating this initial dust layer, the same filter might jump to over 99% efficiency. That's why auto manufacturers recommend air filter service intervals of 30,000 miles or more. They know the filter gets more efficient over time. Every time you change or clean your filter, you're removing this protective dust cake. You're literally resetting the filtration back to its worst state. So stop changing your air filters, maybe. And it's the same thing for oil filters, in case you're wondering. So changing your oil filter prematurely is also worse for your engine. This is a great opportunity for the science is stupid, I will always change my oil every 3,000 miles no matter what club to roast me in the comments. Helps the algorithm. Now, you might be concerned that a dirty neglected filter might affect your miles per gallon and your hearse purrs. It's a logical concern. But SAE paper 2013-01-0311 titled Effective Air Filter Condition on Diesel Vehicle Fuel Economy looked at exactly those topics. And it clearly shows that when going from a brand new filter to a clogged filter to an extremely clogged filter, the change in fuel efficiency was smaller than the error of the dynamometer used to perform the testing. Meaning, at least in the case of diesel engines, the condition of the filter isn't affecting fuel economy enough to even measure. But they did see a drop in power, as indicated by slower acceleration from 20 to 80 mile per hour when a severely clogged filter was used. So a dirty filter doesn't affect fuel economy, but it can affect power. Probably. So, according to science, you should change your air filter more frequently if you want maximum power, or just forget it even exists if you want maximum engine life. I choose option B. It's cheaper. And just like your engine requires a lot of clean air for peak performance, your body requires proper nutrition to perform at its best. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. AG1 is a comprehensive daily health drink that combines multivitamins, pre and probiotics, superfoods, and antioxidants into one simple scoop. AG1 provides nutrients to support your body, brain, and gut health. I've been really focused on my health and fitness over the past year. My cardio is better. I've gained muscle and I've lost 30 pounds of fat. American pounds, not British. A big part of that weight loss is a low carb, high protein diet, which is great for muscle gain and shedding fat, but it's not necessarily great for overall health, allegedly. When your diet limits the types of foods you eat, it also limits the variety of nutrients your body receives. Steak, chicken, and broccoli will only get you so far. And that's why I take AG1 every single day. AG1 helps fill the nutrient gaps between the steaks and the salads I sell to eat. AG1 has over 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, and it has replaced my daily multivitamin and probiotic. I like taking my AG1 right after my morning workout to help boost my energy for the rest of the day. One scoop, or one travel pack, and 12 ounces of cold water, and I've got peace of mind that I'm getting comprehensive nutrition to support my busy lifestyle. And you guys know I'm about the science. AG1 is backed by research that you can check out on their website. AG1 is shown to support gut health and help fill common nutrition gaps even in healthy eaters, which most of us are not. So if you're looking for more nutrients, more energy, and better gut health backed by science, give AG1 a try. It's flexible and risk-free. Adjust, update, or cancel your membership at any time. And AG1 has a 90-day money-back guarantee. 
head to my link at drinkag1.com slash freedomworks or scan the QR code to get a free welcome kit, including a bottle of vitamin D and free AG1 travel packs when you first subscribe. That's drinkag1.com slash freedomworks or scan the QR code right here. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Now back to engine science. Okay, factory air boxes versus aftermarket cold air intakes. Factory air boxes are, in fact, cold air intakes. Back in the early days of cold air intakes, they were actually replacing an intake that drew air from the hot engine bay. So the name meant something back then. Maybe. But now, an aftermarket cold air intake is simply replacing a factory cold air intake that the OEM spent millions of dollars to perfect. Now, neither one is fundamentally better or worse. They were just designed with different objectives in mind. Let's put them up side by side. OEMs use a very effective, high efficiency filter because they want the engine to last hundreds of thousands of miles in practically any environment. The aftermarket is willing to sacrifice your engine's longevity for performance. We're gonna talk a lot more about this later. OEMs put a large enough filter to provide adequate flow for factory power levels for a specific service interval. The aftermarket gives you a filter with much larger surface area to support more power. The OEM wants the filter to be cheap enough that you'll actually replace it, eventually. The aftermarket gave you a cleaning kit that got lost six years ago, so here's a new filter for $100. The OEM designs the intake to protect your filter from getting wet and or frozen from rain, snow, puddles, fording rivers, spilt beers, whatever. That's why it's got a built-in tornado generator. Cyclone, vortices. The aftermarket might be sacrificing those safeguards for performance gains, maybe. The OEM designs the intake to supply enough cold air to meet the performance requirements of a stock engine. The aftermarket designs them to supply more and or, allegedly, colder air to meet power requirements well above stock. Sound or quietness. Believe it or not, your engine spits sound waves out of its suck hole the same as it does out of its blowhole, just like you and I. OEMs spend millions of dollars to keep airflow, engine, and turbo noises from making it into the cab because there are actually weirdos out there that don't want to hear their turbo. Psychos. The aftermarket isn't wasting any time or money on noise suppression. Appearance. The OEM wants the intake to fit in, like a zebra and a herd of zebras. The aftermarket intakes are designed to stand out and let people know that you're willing to make poor financial decisions. Poor decision, but it's fun. Manufacturing cost. OEMs are making these things by the thousands per day. They want to make them as cheaply as possible to keep the vehicle costs down and the profits up. The aftermarket intake manufacturers don't care so much about that because they know you're willing to spend $400 for a 2% horsepower increase. What a deal. Now, I'm only going to talk about two of these, filter size and filter efficiency. That's where the performance gains are coming from. All this talk about colder air, flow dynamics, turbulent flatulation, and flux and tabulators is just marketing fluff, for the most part. Some intakes are certainly engineered and built better. I like S&B intakes, not sponsored. But regardless of whose name is on your intake, their recipe for giving you more power is simple. Sell you a really big, really expensive filter that flows a lot more air, and unfortunately, a lot more dirt. That's it. It's not superior flow from a superior design, it's from a big, inefficient filter that is trading your engine's lifespan for performance. That's it. And they aren't trying to hide this fact from you. Well, a lot of them are. S&B doesn't. They give you the test reports for the OEM and their filter. The problem is, most people can't comprehend how bad these filters really are, even with the data slapping them in the face. But fear not, I will teach you. Let me show you some independent test data commissioned by a guy wanting to find the best filter for his Dirty Max. I've linked the website in the description below, and I encourage you to research it for yourself. Take a look at the efficiency difference between the AC Delco and all the others, specifically the k &M. You might look at these numbers and think that there isn't much of a difference between 99.9% .9 and 96% because they are both in the high 90s. But let me give you a visual here. If you blast 10,000 bullets at that AC Delco filter that has 99.93% .9 efficiency, seems a little high to me by the way, seven out of 10,000 bullets get through. And that's really good. The AFE is 99.23% efficient. So out of 10,000 bullets, 77 get through. That's 11 times as many bullets, over a thousand percent increase. The K&N is 96.8% efficient. So out of 10,000 bullets, 320 get through. That K&N allowed 46 times more dust through than the OEM filter. 
So the difference between 99.9% and 96.8% isn't 3.1%. It's 4,500%. AC Delco, AFE, KNN. Notice the AFE scored much better than the KNN, but it still passed 11 times more dirt than the OEM filter. That's 11 times more dirt blowing past your rings, contaminating your oil, and contributing to engine wear. This is just insane. I've had two engines start burning oil prematurely in my life. A 350 small block and a 5.9 Cummins that I still own. Both of them were equipped with K&N filters from an early age. Lesson learned. And you might be thinking to yourself, that's what the oil filter's for. Logical thought. But the problem is that most oil filters only capture particles down to around 20 micron. And most of the dust that gets through your air filter is smaller than 10 microns. So your standard oil filter isn't going to help you much. Guess what size particles are responsible for the majority of engine wear? 5 to 10 micron particles. Says it right here in SAE paper 680536. So the particles that cause the most engine wear when they get into your engine oil are the size of the particles that get passed by your air filter. This is why OEMs don't put filters like this in their vehicles. This is like any other performance mod. There is no free lunch. Basically, anything that increases power output will decrease engine lifespan. Increasing power requires an increase in torque or an increase in RPM. Both will increase the stress on components, thus shortening service life. But here's the difference between a cold air intake and every other performance mod. Other mods will really only increase engine wear or decrease engine service life when you're pushing the engine hard and creating the extra stress. But that inferior filter in your cold air intake is feeding your engine dirtier air 100% of the time. If I put a 100 horsepower tune in my Duramax or Cummins, but I'm just putting down the interstate at 73 miles an hour like the truck does the majority of the time, there's really no detrimental effect from the tune. But the high flow filter in that aftermarket cold air intake is feeding my engine dirtier air 100% of the time, even at idle. Nice. More on that later. Okay, real world pros and cons. We're going to install and test this in a minute, but first I want to make some predictions. That way you guys can roast me when I'm wrong or tell me 11 different ways that I did the test wrong. Okay, I'm going to do some uphill 8th mile runs, just because, and some 73 mile per hour interstate cruising to get acceleration and steady state data. 73 miles per hour because I'm only an aspiring outlaw. Work in progress. So. Will this cold air intake reduce my intake air temps? Maybe. A couple of degrees. Maybe. Will it lower my EGTs? Probably a little in the stock tune and maybe a little more in a hotter tune. Will it increase my acceleration? Probably very little in stock tuning, but it might make a measurable difference with a hot tune. Maybe. Will it increase fuel economy? No. We talked earlier about how even an extremely clogged filter had no effect on the fuel economy of a diesel. So, if you told your wife you needed this to improve efficiency, you lied. Sorry. So here were the 8th mile runs with the factory air intake. It was so slow that the edge timed out at 11.59, I think. So we can just look at the mile per hour at 330 feet and at the 8th mile. With the stock tuning, we were at 54 miles an hour at 330 feet and 64 miles an hour at the 8th mile. With the performance tune, we were at 55 miles per hour at the 330 and 66 miles per hour at the 8th mile. So the tuning was good for one mile per hour at the 330 and two miles per hour at the 8th. Might be time for some better tuning. For our 73 mile per hour interstate cruise, the intake air temp was the same as the ambient air temp. Factory cold air intake, as stated. Our peak EGT was 963 stock and 859 tuned. Now those numbers were in opposite directions, so the tuning didn't lower the peak by 100 degrees. It was just the way that the hills were laid out. Probably. Okay, before we go shorten my engine's lifespan, let's talk about this specific intake. I prefer the SMB intakes for a few reasons. They don't bash other companies' products to sell their own, they're well built, and they have a see-through lid so I can see the filter that I'm never going to service. And they actually publish their test data for you to see. They give you data for the stock filter, an oil filter, and a dry filter. All the datas. Not hiding anything as far as I can tell. I like the dry filters because they are slightly more efficient and I'm never going to waste my time cleaning an air filter anyway, so why get a cleanable one? This one has been on my excursion for four years, and it's obviously never been cleaned. Okay, let's time lapse this. All 
All right, a solid four minutes for the removal of the stock system and 19 minutes to install the SMB kit. So $350 and 23 minutes for shortened engine life and 20-ish horsepower I'll never notice without a dyno. Okay, so what were the numbers after the install? With stock tuning, the 330 foot mile per hour was 54 and the eighth mile was 64. So it made no measurable difference with stock tuning. With the performance tune, the 330 was 55 miles per hour and the eighth mile was 67 miles per hour. So I picked up an astounding one mile per hour. Awesome. So the cold air intake provided no measurable difference in stock tuning and a very minimal difference with mild tuning. But that's something, I guess. For our 73 mile per hour interstate cruise, our intake air temp was still the same as ambient, as expected. Our PKGT was 919 stock and 852 tuned, so slightly lower. And that's something, small. Now, these systems, or should I say the filter, really start to shine as the power levels increase. So pulling a heavy load up a steep grade would most likely show an increase in airflow and reduction in EGTs. But I'm not gonna hook up the trailer just to show you what plenty of dyno videos already have. Too lazy, sorry. These things will improve performance and lower EGTs at higher power levels. I'm not disputing that at all. Okay, should you buy a cold air intake? I know it sounds like I'm bashing cold air intakes, but I'm not. I'm just giving you all of the information, not just the information that will sell you a product that probably won't give you the outcome you're expecting. I've got SMB intakes on two trucks, but I understand the benefits and the trade-offs. My excursion makes a ton of power for a 7.3 power stroke, which isn't saying much. It needs the airflow, and it just doesn't get a ton of miles put on it every year. The Duramax doesn't currently need one, but it has one for science. And I've got engine oil bypass filtration to help mitigate all the additional dust finding its way into my oil. And the reality of it is, with as many trucks as I own, it's not likely that I'll ever be able to wear out that engine anyway. But I'll try. So here's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. If you are the kind of person that puts tons of miles on a truck and run them until they are completely shot, I'd stick with a stock intake to prolong the engine life. If you operate off-road or in dusty conditions often, like logging, forestry, construction, the oil industry, or you live on a gravel or dirt road, I'd stick with the stock intake and filter. You need the superior filtration provided by the OEM filter more than anyone. If you are at stock or near stock power levels, maybe don't spend the money on a cold air intake unless you're cool with accelerated engine wear for no other benefit than looking cool and making more noise. You just don't see enough performance gain on a stockish truck to offset the potential increase in engine wear. If you want more performance, spend the money on some mild tuning. Your engine and your butt dyno will be much happier in the long run. If you're running moderate tuning, it's a toss up. The truck will still make plenty of power with the factory intake. You can probably squeeze 20 more horsepower out of it with an aftermarket intake if you're willing to sacrifice some engine life. And if you're a tune five, all day, every day kind of guy, you might as well go ahead and get a cold air intake. The performance gain from an intake increase as the power level goes up. And you'll probably wear the rest of the truck out or blow the engine before it's had a chance to wear itself out anyway. Probably. And if you drive a squatted truck, just remove the air filter altogether and go ahead and get rid of that oil filter too. Put that truck out of its misery. So let's wrap this up. Your factory intake is a cold air intake. It is designed to quietly provide enough clean, cool air to support factory horsepower levels for hundreds of thousands of miles. Aftermarket intakes sacrifice filter efficiency and thus engine longevity for performance gains. If you understand the trade-off and you're good with it, go ahead and swipe your credit card. But if you're gonna make poor financial decisions, be smart about it. All right, folks, if you've made it this far, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons, leave a comment about a video topic you'd like to see, share this video with your know-it-all brother-in-law, and as always, stay curious.